Good morning, everybody. Very nice to be here on this stage in this conference. Um, and um, it was announced as the uh, the distributed network I'm going to talk to uh, to talk about, and it's on the title of my slides as well. But it will be the distributed network is the ambition we have. You know, that's what the goal is we're trying to reach. And in this talk, I'll explain. Uh, how far we are in, in uh, approaching that goal and uh, what kind of vision we have behind doing this. Um, in my presentation, I'll, I'll be uh, explaining a little bit more about uh, the initiative uh, in the Netherlands for a digital heritage network. Uh, that's actually a lot broader than only a technical infrastructure. Then I'll be uh, looking for a short while at the current way of uh, doing things, like the way we aggregate uh, collection data from heritage collection, and um, what, in in our perspective, the problems are with, with doing that, and, and how we could really think about doing it differently, and what strategies could be to improve that. And based on those ideas, and um, in that part, I'll be addressing a number of problems with we have as a linked data community, as a semantic web community in general, I think. And that's, uh, for me, a, a very important topic to discuss here because I'm really interested in how we can um, think about ways of doing things, things differently. And I think there are some uh, shortcomings in the current technology of the semantic web, but I'll be talking about that. Uh, later on. And then based on these ideas, I show how we are trying to implement it in the, uh, in the Dutch uh, digital heritage network and how are we, how the steps are we taking. Um, the Dutch digital heritage network is an initiative of, uh, of the five, of five uh, national organizations. Uh, um, I'm from the uh, uh, the National Library. Uh, we work together with the National Archives, with the, our National Sound and Vision uh, Institute, um, also with uh, our Cultural Heritage uh, Agency, and a number of research institutes that, that hold collections as well. And um, at some point, uh, a few years ago, we sat together uh, around the table at our Ministry of Culture and said, well, we really should think about the way we are doing things and how we can improve it in order to increase the, uh, the social value of the things we're doing because uh, we do a lot of things, we're investing a lot of money in making uh, our collections available in the digital way. But the results from that uh, are not optimal, <laughs> as I say it uh, politely. Um, so the idea is how can we look at all the things we're doing, the way we're, we're uh, approaching our problems uh, within the domains, and how can we talk to each other and see how, uh, what the possibilities are to improve that. And that's uh, written down in the strategic plan uh, in 2015. And it's really, uh, it's, at the moment, it's working out in, in uh, founding uh, actually a new organization in order to create this, this way of working together. So it's really a big thing where all these, uh, the national uh, institutes are involved in, but also the networks they're, uh, they're part of. So it's all also about provincial, regional, and, and local institutes. And they're really, we're really trying to talk to them and, and work together and see if we can improve things. And doing that from the user perspective is really something uh, very important for us. So um, it's not for from uh, thinking about uh, fr uh, from the perspective of the domains, the things we're doing. Uh, we're basically doing uh, great things, of course. But the user doesn't know our structure, the user doesn't know our data, the user doesn't know uh, 
what is where, basically. And uh, if you think backwards, and I'll be uh, showing some examples of that uh, in, in linked data problems as well, uh, you really need to think in a different way to do it right for the user. And we heard it yesterday also, of course. Um, we came up with a, a three-layered model, which is probably uh, not really a new concept for you. Um, but we're really focusing on three levels. And we look at the sustainability of all the things we're doing and the digitization process we have and the digital material there is and see if we can uh, share our services in the network so people can profit from the things we have. And we're looking from the visibility layer and see if we can make flexible uh, services that's, that are really user-based and the user will be, uh, uh, of course, anybody. It, it can be any type of uh, uses of our data and we want to provide it from a flexible network. And that's the middle part, eh? and it's about the usability of the things we have. And uh, thinking in, in uh, interoperability uh, technologies like linked data is a very essential part of this strategy. If you look at the current infrastructure, uh, I always like to show this slide. Um, this is an example of all the great things we are doing. Um, there's Europeana in there, there's our um, yeah, our uh, national uh, uh, publications environment uh, that we're running uh, from the KB together with all the university libraries uh, with, with millions of digitized papers in there. There are regional portals, um, there are specific portals for, for material types. But if you want to get the whole picture being a user, then you have a lot of problems because you end up searching all the different portals in order to find the right answers. So there's really a, a no easy way to get a, an idea of what is really available. <coughs> and all these portals are built on the same kind of infrastructure. Uh, as you all know, uh, if you want to build a portal like that, then you start aggregating the data. We have these marvelous uh, uh, solutions for that and then you build an index and you show uh, the people what you have and you do that based on source data that, that is around and which you aggregate through an aggregation process. And I think it really brought us a lot. Eh? The, the, the OAI PMH protocol is a very uh, useful protocol. We're all using it and it helps a lot in order to deliver the information to the customers. <coughs> um, it did open up our, our silos eh? we, we, before uh, OAI PMH. Uh, we had closed systems with all the uh, specific protocols in there, and now we have a general way of addressing or getting to the data. And it also urged us to, to start thinking about our own data because the data was merging into central places and we needed to think about data models and I think the work Europeana did with, with the EDM model is really great to see how you can look at the same data from a, from a general perspective um, and it supported cross-domain and cross-collection uh, feasibility. So I think there were, uh, we have been doing great things, but it's not very, uh, Optimal. It's, it's not uh, the smartest way to do things. And this is a mapping from a, a real life situation in the Netherlands where we aggregate data and then bring it to one aggregation platform and another aggregation platform. So, hey, that's convenient. I'll, uh, I'll get my feed from there. And then we build trees of aggregators. And if you think about the, the, the real data is living beneath and the user is somewhere way further at the end of the line. And the, the connection between the user and, and the, the organization that maintains the data is, is very, uh, very distant. Uh, the information is being copied, uh, it's being enriched, uh, it's being uh, corrected. But all those kind of uh, 
things are not going back to the source because we don't have, at the moment, we don't, I don't know any system that has really uh, good provisions in order to to feedback and the enhancements that have been done on another place. And because we're just doing copying and, and, and processing and steps further. And if you look at it, um, and I'll stop bashing uh, <laughs> the aggregation uh, uh, approach because it is very useful and we still need to do it. But if you look at it, there are two major problems. One problem is that, that we have a, a very poor semantic alignment, so uh, we don't have general uh, attention for naming the same things with the same identifiers, with the same uh, definitions. And I think uh, the integration of the data itself is, is problematic because we keep copying stuff and, and it's, uh, we have licenses problems, we have version problems, we have data living in one portal that's not the same version as data living in another portal. And we thought, well, how can we make this, uh, how can we do it smarter? And uh, for that, we, we started to think about uh, principles of, of building a, a discovery infrastructure based on, on different uh, principles. And one very basic idea in that is that we want to keep the data in the source. We want to have the source being the leading uh, point for publishing the data. And of course, at some point, you need to build an index, you need to do some things with it, but it always should be referenced to a clear source. And that's a very principal uh, uh, design idea in there. And if you look at it, we try to, to uh, catch on with, with the general idea of uh, going away from the repository-centric way of approaching the web and approaching the data living on the web to a more uh, uh, really web-centric idea. So let data live in the web and be usable. And uh, I was here on Monday enjoying the workshop about Dokili, which is really the way of thinking about this. And that is basically what we're trying to do as well. And we try to uh, approach that using the, the linked data principles. Well, I think we cannot be, it's not, re not really need to explain the linked data principles for this audience, I think. But it really comes back that, that in the source data that you use the, the URIs for shared references. So for uh, the terminology sources that are available, make sure that people can use the right URI for an author, for a place, for a person, for a concept and make that available in the source system. And another thing, there was yesterday uh, a discussion about uh, in the keynote, uh, what, sh what, should, what should you make available as amount of data, eh? so the, the top 10 fields. And I think thinking in linked data terms, there's no need for that because you can adjust the way you uh, open up your data according to the user needs, because you can select models that, that support, eh? like schema.org is, is a flattened model for search engines, so search engines understand who you are and what you are doing. But if you have a need to show the complete uh, deep model for your domain, then there's no obstacle for doing that, because link data supports mo multiple models, and even, I know that in the, uh, data exchange working group, there's even thoughts about uh, supporting this on the HTTP level, that you can ask for one kind of format for your data or another one. And I think that's very interesting. At the, at the network level, we try to provide the things uh, for uh, the institution. So we have uh, shared terminology sources being published uh, in, in, in the right way. We, we provide APIs that can be implemented in, uh, in systems. And we're really building on previous work because a lot of these ideas had been around for, for a number of years. Uh, we tried to use commercial tools. Eh? There's the, the pool party tool, which we use for shared uh, building of, of authority lists. 
but also uh, uh, special specialized tools that have been uh, created in the Netherlands. So basically, we say uh, let's build your data is linked data in the right way, use the right uh, URIs for that, the right references in there, and make your data available. And that's, of course, a big problem because, <coughs> wow, okay, I really need to uh, speed up, sorry. Uh, source systems can't really provide it because uh, uh, they're not fit to do that. So uh, the, the, the IT suppliers Supplying this, uh, the source systems, uh, the collection management systems are really in our focus as well and really uh, are organizing sessions with them. And, and um, they're actually really uh, seeing this as a strategic advantage in order to really go along with this. And it's very interesting. But even if we do publish it like that, then we have a problem. And um, this is a little bit of the linked open data cloud. But if you, uh, there was yesterday, the question who has his data in the cloud, but the question should have been who has his data uh, published in Data Hub, because that's the basis for the linked open data cloud. And it means if you have linked data and you want to have it being found, you need to register at Data Hub, which is kind of a weird model for the semantic web, I think. And that's actually something that's also uh, is being picked up in, uh, with DBpedia in, in the new DBpedia strategy. And the, uh, DBpedia will be really be focusing on making the connections between data sets and will be supporting structure to find relations in data sets. And that's a new uh, strategy that's being developed at the moment uh, for DBpedia. There's another problem. This is all, all the things we do. Eh? We, we have an object and we point to a definition. Uh, and this is from the arc, arts and architecture thesaurus. And we say, OK, this is about the windmill. And that's great. But the user doesn't know the object. The user knows the term windmill and wants to find all the things that are connected searching for windmill. So what you want to do is basically have the and have it also the other way around. So uh, put a backlink at the source description as well. And it is something that we can, cannot do at the moment. And I think the, the development of linked data notifications and, and uh, protocols like that are very interesting in order to, uh, to solve this part of the problem, I think. So what we do today, uh, the, there's a few approaches to, to make it work. And you can publish it at schema.org and then uh, let the search engines uh, do the magic. Wow. Okay. Um, we can copy it to a triple store, and that's what we do normally. We aggregate all the data to a triple store and then uh, um, uh, build very nice things. But then we are building the same kind of aggregation platform. We should be, maybe could do a federated query. <coughs> But based on the, on the current uh, Spark or endpoints, that is not really uh, feasible, I think. And then, uh, we saw it uh, earlier as well, um, we're really try, uh, looking into using linked data fragments. And we're working together with Ruben Verborg and, and colleagues to see if we can make this work for our, for our network. Doing federated search, I have to speed up, sorry. <laughs> Doing federated search. It's an interesting idea, but we, we will be ending up with uh, 1,500 institutions. Uh, doing federated queries over 1,500 endpoints is not going to work. So what we also want to do is create a layer with the backlinks in order that we know, OK, for these kind of topics, for these kind of places, uh, these kind of sources are the most feasible to, uh, to query. So that brings me to the, to the last part. Um, then i out of my time, I think. Um, we are building a strategy for this uh, distributed network, and it means uh, at the source level, uh, build, uh, make sure that linked data becomes available uh, in all the sources. And at the network level, we want people to register their linked data, uh, so we know at least that the, the linked data is there. And we, built a, we will build a knowledge graph with all the backlinks in there. So we have a discovery infrastructure for the linked data in the network. 
And based on that, we can drive portals and platforms in order to select uh, the information and even do aggregation. Uh, I mean, that's, that's, that's a practical approach, of course. So if you want to know more about this, uh, we published this in June this year, uh, a high-level design, and it's available on, uh, on GitHub. Um, and we're working on a roadmap. At the moment, we are really uh, in the prototyping phase, and we're uh, actually trying to work from the current infrastructure and make additions to it. So we're not planning to build a complete new, different thing, but we're just trying to add in the current infrastructure, add uh, new technologies and smarter technologies in order to make steps. And we do that in, in multiple projects. And um, we have, I have a, a few links in there because I promised in, in my abstract that I would show <laughs> things. If you go to these links, uh, then you find the first ideas. And it's not, not the distributed uh, working full fledged, but it's just uh, uh, working on these ideas, so create the shared references, uh, use the link data from different sources. Uh, and one of the projects is uh, from Adam, AdamNet, and Lucas Koster is involved there as well. So I find it always nice to mention his name. Yes. <laughs> OK, thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Anno, for this insight. Um, I think we have a little time for some questions, if there are any. So the comment about linked data notifications, is that something you're actively working on or um, have, have scheduled? Uh, because we've asked similar questions in, in some of our projects. Hmm. We have been looking at it, um, and for me, the the the, uh, the thing keeping us from doing it is the uh, implementation part at the local side. Eh? So you really require institutions to handle uh, that advanced protocol. Uh, so uh, I think at some point we will be uh, using it internally in in our infrastructure but in order to require uh, uh, suppliers to really implement that protocol, that, that's for us too early. So that, that's why we, we are focusing now on, on the linked data fragments uh, approach, because I think that should be able to, to implement it locally and then build the big links from that. So that's, that's our uh, second approach, yeah. Thank you. Well, thanks again, Eno. Okay, thank you.